Hello, everybody. We are back. It is the debrief back later than ever. Um, yesterday, we were supposed to be out doing uh, the old debrief shebang, but we couldn't because StreamYard was being a piece of you-know-what, and we were only streaming live, apparently, on Twitter and Facebook, apparently, uh, which wasn't ideal. So we had to take that down after about five uh, to ten minutes because what is the point in doing this if we don't reach our YouTube members? Zero point. Uh, guys, we had a very heated Patreon episode, Generation Leads. Well worth it. I will be releasing a clip of it tomorrow and uh by god my dad wasn't happy today uh, so make sure you go check that out you can cancel whenever you want it's only four quid a month and well worth it we've got a podcast with gabe on and we're getting a podcast with oscar on as well uh, i'm just getting to get into a few of your comments tonight we're going to be nattering about the championship debate who's going to win it who's going to come second what's going to happen the eventualities the fixtures the form it is mental at the minute did a video about it earlier on i cannot quite believe what's going on and I can't think of two better people uh, to get into it with. Evening, mate, says Paul. Hi, mate, says IPW. Something needs to change, says R Ronnie Kipper. In uh, If we want to win these last four games, does anyone know how many passes between Greb Kamara, Rodon and Mez last game? There's just no fluidity to us at this moment. Um, Arthur's already in the building saying, stop moaning, only lost one game. Um, are you, David? Hello, hello, hello. Right, let's get into it. There's over 200 of you here. Um, I think that's an acceptable num uh, number to get into the natter. Oscar, Maria, Gabe, Gabe Stoutemore. Stoutemore. There you go. Yes. No, I had it right the first time. <laughs> God damn it. Um, how are we doing, Oscar? All good? We're going to make this through? I'm good, I'm good. I just saw the uh, Ronnie Kipper in there, and it reminded me after the Coventry game, because I was a bit down. I don't know why. The YouTube algorithm, it just comes up with random videos and Ronnie Pickering came up again. And then <laughs> once you watch the one video, you watch Ronnie Pickering and then you watch the next uh, follow-up video where Ronnie Pickering is now, five years on in that lot. <laughs> and then it's when Ronnie Pickering is. Honestly, man, it's mad what, what has happened to him now, you know. Is that is that what we should do for views? Just like, uh, we'll just make like a one leads version. Like, where is Ronnie Pickering <laughs> now? Maybe that'll just get us the views. Why not? Honestly, mate, it, it has me hooks anyway. It's probably, I'm probably its target market though, isn't it? In terms of, if you're stupid enough to watch the first one again, you watched it a million times, you'll watch the other ones. But yeah, man, honestly, just Ronnie Kippering reminding me of it. What a legend of a man. Um, oh, I knew, man. Who, who I is Ronnie Pickering after the last two games, to be fair. So, you know. Who is Ronnie Pickering, says J-Dog? J-Dog. Um, oh, you've got a lot to learn. Search, search him after after this, mate. At Barnet chat, Oscar looking fresh. Just had mine cut, Oscar, but doesn't matter, mate. You're still looking fresh in the dark, so there you go. Fair, fair play to you, mate. Fair play. By the way, Gabe, thanks for the post. Sunderland vid. Gabe did a very, very good job the other day. Um, never seen the championship. It's so hard to call, says Louis. Uh, Gabe, how are we doing, bud? All good? Doing fantastic is uh, the most uh, uninspiring, doing fantastic I think I've ever heard from Gabe. So do you want to give it a bit more oomph there, Gabe? No, I like what I said. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Just stubborn streak. <laughs> okay. I'm Daniel um, Farking that I, I refuse to change once I've decided on a course of action. <laughs> uh, so Dallas give um, two players manager. Yeah, yeah. okay, well, right. We, we tried it yesterday, but obviously the YouTube YouTube wasn't having any of it. it sounded like my dad then, the YouTube. Um your dad was raging. <laughs> you were right. Your dad Nate. is absolutely raging. In Nate, fact, I, I wanted to I wanted to call ahead and be like, is there anybody in the city of Leeds available for like anxiety management across just for people across the city? <laughs> my dad my dad's been my, my dad, my dad has been my, my dad has been Gabe, you'll have watched it on the Patreon as well. My dad has been literally the most level headed person. And anytime I've been getting a little bit irate with them, he's calmed me down, brought me back to life. And, you know, he has been like 100% playoffs. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm so confident. And this last, since the international break, Oscar, I'll link you the episode. My dad today has literally lost Can I quote him? Dream. Can I quote him? He goes, Don't, yeah. I hate to end on a, on a negative. I like to come out of here on a positive, but we're not going to go up. <laughs> He's just, he needs, and the context is he needs to see change. And that is a perfect segue. Oh my God. <laughs> that, is a, that is a perfect segue into this episode, I think. Oh. Um, but yeah, check it out if you want. Um, yeah, it's, it is worth it. It's a funny one. There's but, lots um, of stuff on the internet of people looking unhappy. I, I went onto the offset YouTube the other day. <laughs> Brownie post -match, match, match interviews. Doesn't look happy, does he? <laughs> he looks stressed. Yeah. Yeah, he's not happy. I don't, I don't think anyone in Leeds is happy at the minute. So, yeah, I mean, what 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 did probably make a lot of people in Leeds and, and anyone who supports Leeds United a little bit happier last night, 
and, and the night before is somehow in this game week, I don't know exactly what number game week it is, Oscar, but... 42? 42. There we go. So number 42. All three teams failed to score. Uh, Leicester lost. And Ipswich drew it home to Watford. What on earth is going on, mate? What is going on? It is the EFL, mate. It's prime EFL, isn't it? It's it's mad, honestly. I mean, we've all been, for most of the season, all three teams have probably been perfect for 90% of it. Yeah, we've all had our off spells, but for 90% of the season, we've got the job done. And yeah, it's just one of those, whether it's a bit of nerves, whether it's a bit of fatigue, maybe it's a bit of both. And listen, it, it you're looking at a lot of teams now because there's a lot still to play for. Maybe not so much Watford, but pretty much the whole end end of the table, 20, 21 of the 24 teams have still got something to play for, really. And that's not quite a common thing for the EFL. So there's still teams fighting for their lives. Every single team we play between now and the end of the season, other than maybe Samson, have still got something to play for in terms of the league campaign. So, yeah, it's scary. It's scary what they can do at this stage of the season. But, yeah, I can't say I'm massively surprised because it's just EFL, isn't it? And it, it may, honestly, it annoys me more, especially the Leicester game, I mean, the last two games is the angriest I think I've ever been on YouTube. Genu- Maybe after the top them four one, actually, that might no, that was a. I've known you. I've known you on this scene for a no, good that five, was head on, that five was head years. On that to be fair, the uh, yeah. lead um, the four one against Tottenham. But yeah. honestly, last two games absolutely seething. But I was probably more seething on Tuesday night because Leicester just dropped one completely at Millwall, and you just think if we took four points three points from the last two games, how much healthier would that league table look? But it is what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a bit of a nuts one. Um, I, it's half, half... I don't really know how to describe it. Half glass empty, half glass full. You know, we're, we've, we've edged a point closer to Leicester. Uh, Ipswich have failed to make that point uh, sort of advantage count, which Oscar, we spoke about when Gabe had left just off air yesterday yeah. and we thought... That was going to be insurmountable. That is going to be a if big. If it got big to three rally. points, it's yeah, scary. scary yeah, times. It, it, well, well, it, well, it felt it, it, well, it, well, it feels like our fixture difficulties are, are, are quite similar with Ipswich as well, and it feels like you know if they'd have got a three point advantage, that is, it's it just feels like too much at this stage with only four games to go. Uh, Gabe, are, are you as surprised as as me and Oscar at the minute? It just feels like sort of logic has gone out the window at this moment in time. No, I think I think logic has been out the window all season, and I think that we're we're finally starting to see the application of gravity on three teams that have performed at a rate that has defied it. Um, to be honest, I never ever predicted, never thought that we would uh, go unbeaten in the new year. That no. would be a ridiculous uh, um, prediction. It would also be a ridiculous pr- prediction for anybody, and I don't think anybody in the Ipswich fan base was doing this predicting the way they've pulled out results time and time again, over and over and over again. And then, of course, the, cat- the catastrophic, the meteoric rise of Leicester and the, the sustained levels of having a 17-point gap. Like, we knew they were good, but they honestly, there was not a lot of underlying data to support them being that good. And we said on this channel multiple times after watching them, ah, they don't look that impressive. I think things are starting to... It's odd that it's happening all at once, but over... This is why... When we say data, we're not just talking about numbers. We're talking about trends. This is why trends are observable over time. And those give you the, uh, the the most likely prediction on how things are going to go. One way or another, things things tend to fall back to where they belong. Um, it is a little bit odd that it's happening all at once. But honestly, it may just be that these teams have pushed themselves incredibly hard. And now fatigue is starting to catch up to all three. They could drop results. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying this... If Southampton would have to pretty much win all their fixtures and the other teams would have to continue, like we at Ipswich and Leicester would have to continue to lose the majority of our matches for them to get into an automatic promotion spot. So that's how much of a of a, um, a buffer is in between third and fourth right now. So it's not impossible. I, I actually think, I know that the anxiety has been ratcheted up for Leeds fans and we're all um, we're all sort of on edge. But I actually feel a little bit better looking at a correction because when I look at the last 10 matches, last five matches for each of the teams in the top three, it seems that we're reverting to where we actually should be. Um, so I don't honestly, I'm sure there are causes for concern. We'll talk about the micro points here in a second, I'm sure. But 
I'm not that worried. I'm not. I think I would rather be leads than any um, than those other two teams right now, based on who we're playing on the form. Connor, our form is better than both both of those other two two teams. It's not by a lot, but when we look at it, I mean, would you rather be Ipswich right now with two wins and two losses out of the last four, or Leicester with one win, two losses, one draw out of their last four, or Leeds one win, one loss, two draws out of their last four, and Leeds have had the the, the stronger schedule. I'd rather be Leeds. Oscar, thoughts? Yeah, there's definitely a case for it. I mean, psychologically for Ipswich, it could be a bit of a blow that against Watford. You know, the fact that they've gone two games without scoring. You know, I think the biggest strength for Ipswich all season has been the goals. You know, defensively, they've not been great for most of the season. And they, and I don't think the fact they kept, you know, a clean sheet last night makes any kind of difference to them. Defensively, they're a team that can be got at. You know, they obviously got a very attack-minded left-back, Leif Davis. Matt Clark hasn't been convincing all season for me at right-back. I think he's their clear weak link for me. Um, and I think we're seeing it in both games against them. There's definitely issues for Ipswich defensively. And when the goals do dry up, you've got a concern there for Ipswich, you know, in terms of, you know, what, what, what do they offer if they're if not able to score, you know, two or three a game? You know, that is where you kind of see the weaknesses with with Ipswich. But with Leeds, you know, we we're quite the opposite, really. Defensively, you know, we're going to keep clean sheets. You know, we Sunderland had a few moments against us, but they never really had any clear cut chances. Yes, Jack Clark had that moment where he got free on the left hand side, but Ampadu is so quickly across. If it's not Ampadu, Rodon's across. Firpo I think's improving defensively, um, and has not improved defensively a lot. Gray, of course, isn't a natural fullback, but you know his combination with um, Rodon's good on that side, albeit I do think Robert should come into right back for Gray to go in midfield. But with Leeds, it does feel like we can keep killing sheets. You know, he goes to places like Borough away, QPR away. We can get out of there with 1-0 wins. Even if we're not playing at our best, we can still get out of there with 1-0, 2-0 kind of wins kind of thing. And that's what we've done before the international break. We, we haven't played well, really, since, if we're being honest, we haven't played well. I pinpointed it back to Plymouth in mid-February when we won 2-0. That was probably our first sort of scrappy kind of win after Swansea and Rotherham, um, you know, the heavy wins in that kind of sense. And the thing is with Leeds, you know we're going to score goals. You know, you still know with Crescentia Somerville, yes, he's maybe having a bit of a quiet spell, but you still know he's going to produce the moments. You know, he's he's inches away from scoring, you know, that free kick, you know, to get as a totally undeserved 1-0 win. But this is the margins, and you know we've got the players to make up the margins. Of course. Can I, Oscar, can I just can I just chime in with this? And I think Scott Scott Scott's on the money. Um I don't want to go into too much of a, a monologue here. But just to, to add to add to your point there, I think we've got, you know, when it comes to quality, I do think we 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 have got an inch over Ipswich. I do think that even though the squad is is massively underrated, they are underrated. You're right. Yeah, but, they are. They are. You know, you know, overperforming their xG every single uh, every single week, and, and and you know, I don't think that the same can be, can be said for us really. But I do think. Well, if 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 he is the the crux here, right? Can can we all agree on this, right? And everyone in the chat, I want to get your thoughts as well. If he sticks with the same team, and if he sticks with the same idea going forward, we know. Listen, we know the tactics aren't going to dramatically change. He's not going to change to a three-five-two, uh, uh, an out-and-out four-three-three. This isn't going to happen. But if he stays with the same personnel, if he doesn't implement certain changes, in my opinion, when he knows what he's going to be coming up against, teams know how to set up against Leeds now. Hundred percent. Blackburn are going to come to Leeds and do the exact yeah. same yeah. as what every other club has come to uh, has come and done in the past. You know, however many games when you know, let, let's say you, you know your Coventrys and um, Sunderland when they've, they've stunk the gaff out, but they've looked at looked on counter attacks and they've put four, four you know, two banks behind the ball and they've shifted over as a unit. Right, I keep saying this, but if he does the exact same thing again, I would a hundred percent rather be in an Ipswich fan. Uh, and it's Ipswich Town fans' shoes going into this running because I, I I I would trust Kieran McKenna more than Daniel Farker at the minute if he's going to be stubborn and idle with this team. That's that's my whole sort of that's my whole sort of caveat with this discussion. I think Leeds have the squad potential. Matteo Joseph, Joel Peru, Anthony. We have the quality on the bench. Willie Nyonto to disrupt this massively and, and see a little bit of a new blueprint. If we go into this calendar again if we go into Blackburn again with the same personnel the same problems and he can't be pragmatic through the game until the 82nd minute again then we're just going to face similar problems for me 
yeah, it feels like it would be a similar game again, you know, in terms of the issues we saw. The issues we're seeing at the moment, I think I said to you guys before we even came on air, you know, today and yesterday, when Somerville and Rutter are getting the ball at this moment in time, they're in isolation. They're almost like in their own islands, you know, on the, on the football pitch kind of thing. You know, they've got no one to combine with. You know, everyone's so isolated because Gruev and Kamara like to play deeper. It's the type of midfielders they are. They want to receive the ball at the back four and stay in a certain space. You know, both like to do that. Um, Archie Gray, we know, is not a natural fullback. He's not going to really, you know, push on ahead of Dan James. And maybe Dan James, you know, in terms of inform, isn't as inform as what I'm willing on to is. There's definitely got to be changes. And I do believe... Whether really, be Chris, Chris? Chris, really? Sorry, Oscar. Really? Wow. Okay, mate. Yeah, Fair we, enough. We do. I think we do. I think what I'd, the reason I say we do is because we have at times this season, we've gone with very different kind of outlooks throughout the season. At the start of the season, everyone forgets Rutter was playing number nine, Perot was playing number 10. And for mm-hmm. sort of 15, 20 games, that worked great. To be fair to Farker, after around the Sunderland and Coventry game, or if it might have been later than that, he decided, right, okay, Rutter and Perot, it can't work together. I need Rutter in that 10 role to yep. get us a bit more creativity through the middle, ball progression through the middle. And to be fair, we made that change. Bamford went up top. And also, Jed Spence, let's not forget, you know, he, he tried to find as many different ways as he could to get Jed Spence into the team. And for whatever reason, whether it's Jed Spence, whether it's Farker, whether it's this and that, whether it's attitudes, all sorts of different things throwing, throwing about that, he changed that pretty quickly to actually great right back. So he has done it this season. He has made changes quickly. Don't get me wrong. Last couple of weeks, it's been incredibly frustrating, and I think stubbornness is a fair, fair um, analysis to have of it. You know, in terms of the, it's not even so much the starting eleven; it's how long the subs are taking to be made. Yeah. You know, with that game yeah, on, on Tuesday, it was crying out for Wilfred Nonto to combine in the middle of the pitch with Wilfred, with Jorginho Rutter, a little bit more security and a little bit more dynamism down that side of the pitch and the midfield needed changing a lot lot quicker than what it did in fact we never actually did change the midfield we just went to a 4-1-4-1 we left Glenn Kamara in there and um, sorry we left Eli Gruev in there and we just went for it in an attacking sense and it worked a little bit better but I still think in that midfield it either needs to be Ampadu or Gray going into there it needs but to I was but, 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 but I was I was watching something I was watching something the other day and it was I just went back and looked at his press conference and it was post the Chelsea game hmm. and he was getting asked so much about uh, Matteo Joseph I'm not saying there's a correlation here but it's almost like when he's badgered about it in the press he reverts to type so he's badgered about it in the press. It was Leeds, Leeds were against, against Huddersfield the next game. I went there. I can see Kevin in the chat. I went there with him. Um, and 1-1, one, one, we needed a goal. It was another, Bamford missed another sitter. And he refused to even put Matteo Joseph on the pitch the game after. He just scored twice against Chelsea. So I, I do sit there and wonder, is he almost right now trying to prove a point? And that's how it feels right now. That's how it feels. He's trying I get that to- that's how it feels, Connor. But I would, listen, maybe that's what he's doing. It seems like a lot of, I mean, I guess all we can do is hypothesize. Look, I think one thing I will say in reference to Chris, who made a comment a couple minutes ago, I might agree with him in terms of, I think we can get through Blackburn with the same starting 11. No, right? no way. I'm not, no, listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me for a minute. No what I'm saying is when we look at, we haven't beaten Sun, uh, Sunderland this season. We lost one, drew one. We haven't beaten Coventry this season. We, uh, we drew one, lost one. Look, Blackburn, I think we Blackburn, match- Blackburn were all over us for periods. We just got out of that game. So what? My point is that uh, there's a and logic to saying are better now than what they were then, to be honest. Look, they, really? They, 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 their form's been worse. Uh, uh, I, look, there's a logic to saying that we could, like hypothetically, could feel the same 11 and get results out of that game. I would be worried about it. This is my point. Um, I'd be worried about it because then if we do get through that match... Uh, with a win, he might start the same um, 11 against Middlesbrough, which I think we'd absolutely tank doing. I think the, the changes need to be made. We need to see Nanto on the right side. I would like to say Matteo Joseph start um, uh, as striker so you, for so both you, of these you, matches. You, you think you think there's logic in starting Dan James over Willie Nanto in this game? I'm saying there is a logic to it, yes. Which is what specifically to Leeds? You, when you look at the results that have come up, like with Dan James starting in the 11, we beat Millwall 2 0. We beat Sheffield uh, Wednesday 2 0. No, James uh, came on in that game. And oh, that's right. The, he did. No, excuse before me. The, before the international break as well. Since then, he's been god awful. My point think, is that, again, I'm not advocating for a Dan James start. 
what I'm saying is that if you're Daniel Farka, you're thinking, right, he there's some because uh Blackburn is a lesser quality team, he's going to have more margin for error against uh, against them than he would against a Middlesbrough. Like I would be terrified if we were playing a Middlesbrough next and I saw Dan James in the starting 11. If I see him against Blackburn, I'll say, okay, I want to see some changes happen if this isn't working. But if we get a bad 40 to five minutes from Dan James, we can probably uh, survive this. That's all I'm saying, guys. And I think that, that's the logic to it. If you're Farka, he seems to like to, st to stick with predictable lineups. I think he does that for purposes of team cohesion. I don't agree with it. I think Willie Nantra should start. I think the subs, I've been, I'm the one that produced this statistic here about uh, um, the average time our substitutes are getting. So uh, I, I am in agreement on all those points. I'm just saying that, what I don't want to get into is if we see the same starting 11 against Blackburn Rovers, we instantly assume that we're not going to get out of that match with three points. That's a ridiculous assumption. That This lineup has won many games this season, and it should win this one. Uh, it's, it's if Willie Nanto cool. wasn't available for selection health-wise, would we say, oh, we're going to drop all three points uh, if Dan no, James it, starts? I doubt I doubt any of us would say that. But the squad's in a funk. The squad, the squad, the, but the squad's completely out of form now. It's in a funk. It's completely in a funk. So it's like we can we can talk about previous form before the international break, but it's not relevant. It, none of it's relevant. It is right relevant now. because be, no, it is not. relevant. Yes, it is because we've no, seen drops. It is. We've seen drops in form earlier in the season. And then just as surely as we looked incredibly ordinary against teams like Preston, against teams like Huddersfield, we turned around the very next game with this uh, with the same personnel largely. Form. When, when, have seen, when have you seen form like this in the season? Form. Aside from at the start. Form we like this. Well, hang on. We've, we've won. <laughs> what do you mean? We've won one. Four, we've lost four, one. We've drawn games. two. Yeah. Four games. What four games where we've where we've been poor form wise? Yeah, we probably, probably could look at we probably could look at six or seven games where we've not been at our point. That's yeah. not happened since the start of the season. It hasn't. I'm going to pull up the form phone. Hang and on. performances are very different things. You know, we, we were still in great form around the Millwall game, but the performances weren't great. You know, there can be a lot of like results can be fluctuate on a lot of different things. You know, missed chances, quality, and it felt like the quality got us through that kind of Huddersfield to Millwall spell where we were kind of threatening mm. to have a wobble after Huddersfield. And you can't tell me we looked convincing against Stoke or we looked convincing against Sheffield Wednesday in the first half. You know, we have had iffy spells in the last couple of weeks, and it, it, I think it's kind of highlighted more now because we've had the drop off in results as well as the performances. What I'd say is about people like Dan James is Dan James is still a very good player at this level for me, but we're not utilising him correctly. And mm. the other problem with Dan James is, is that Wilfred Nonto is in amazing form. He's arguably our most informed attacker. I think he is our most informed attacker in terms of the last two, mom two months or so. And the game against Blackburn as well, the fact that Blackburn will sit in, it feels to me a game where you want Nonto in there rather than Dan James. I think Dan James, if anything, probably suits the Middlesbrough game away from home more where we'll have less of the ball and you want that counter-attacking threat against Middlesbrough's high line. Um, but mm. I think certainly for certainly for Blackburn, you know, looking to the game in the here and now, I think Nonto suits it better um, because he can drop into those central spaces to combine with Rutter. He's a lot more technical than what Dan James is. And I think it feels to me like Gray and Nonto work better together than what Gray and James are doing at this moment in time. If anything, I've also said as well, I think Roberts should come in at this point. I think we need more offensive threat on the outside as well, like we have with Firpo. I think we need that now with Roberts because the problem with the midfield set up at this moment in time is Kamara and Gruev, solid enough players, but they're not going to offer you a lot of creativity. We've seen that this season. You don't want Kamara and Gruev getting the ball in the final third, to be honest. You want them feeding the ball into the final third and people like Roberts, Firpo, Somerville, Nonto coming at Blackburn from the sides and Rutter through the middle. That That is what I feel is us at our best at this moment in time. I just think, I, I don't think it's massive changes. I just think it's two or three, maybe two. Personnel. Three would be massive changes for Farka, though. That's and that's the point. Yeah, it I think. would. It would. I and think, Oscar, yeah. so, and this is what I'm saying about about form. We have had periods in, in the season, and this is the only reason it's relevant. I'm not saying that's what what's happening now. I'm saying that sometimes a turnaround in form doesn't happen because you make changes on the pitch. Sometimes you have a good week of training. Sometimes players get a little bit healthier. Sometimes they pass whatever stomach bugs that may have been running through the changing room because that's what. It could be a number of factors. We've had matches where we've dropped results against teams like Stoke and then have come out and beaten Huddersfield the next week and, and Leicester United, uh, Leicester United, sorry, Leicester City the week after that. We've had periods. If it was like a series of five, six, seven games where the results and the performances haven't been good, 
then I think, okay, we're on a clear trend, but we're looking at a, a, a pick a portrait and we're choosing the portrait of the last four games, right? As opposed to like 10 being a larger trend. Why, why, is, four di 10, why, why is four different to five? You just said five games. So why well, no, but, I'm, but, we, but we've been talking about the last four, right? You, yeah, but that's relevant. We? That's that's still form. You've just been, you've just been saying uh, over our last four games, we've got have, however many no, points. No, 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 no. You're, you're, mis wins. you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I, I'm picking up on, I thought we were talking about the last four. Well, let's just say five. That's what I'm, uh, it highlights the point that you could choose other blocks of period of time to evaluate form so sure like the last five games haven't been particularly convincing haven't been great but what i would say is we've had other periods and other teams have as well and you can do one of two things you can disrupt the team and make big changes i would choose to uh to swap out dan james and our striker um but that's not what I think what Daniel Farkas sees. And there is a logic to this, guys, that sometimes you play your way out of form. He probably thinks there's some extenuating circumstances that have resulted in poor play. And he thinks he can work those out through training and the team getting healthier. What I'm saying is that if we see that starting 11 pop up on the screen against Blackburn, this idea that we're suddenly going to drop those points, I, I can't really fathom it. I don't really understand it. Well, we should still win the game. There's no question about it. I mean, if you look at the next four games, we should still be aiming to win all four games if we're being honest. Am I saying we will win all yes. four games? I still I think agree. we can. I 100 percent think we can win Me all too. four games if we make the small, subtle changes. Let's not forget how hopeless we looked after Preston and West Brom. You know, and I agree with Gabe on that kind of sense. We have had hopeless periods this season where we yeah. thought it looks like game over here. And then we've made those small when we lost to Preston changes. Oscar. I was I was my head was gone when we lost to Preston. I was like, what on earth? I remember the only that point period I've of made time. Is, is that we did make the changes and obviously what you're saying in terms of if we don't make changes, we should still beat Blackburn. I think we do need to make the changes now. I think it's got to that I point agree. where I'm not necessarily saying it's got to be Bamford, it's got to be James. It's just got to be some kind of freshening up of the team a little bit. Not because yeah. they've become bad players so much, just to freshen things up. It's a 46 game season. And in the modern game as well, you know, the energy we play, put into games in terms of pressing, things like that, we do need to rotate things up a little bit. Um, I'm not you're wanting... you're, 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 even if you just look at one change, you're essentially putting a better player in for another player. Do you know what I mean? We're putting yeah. we're putting an Italian international in who's a better footballer than Dan James, who've, whose confidence is on, on its arse at the minute, and he's struggling to play in tight spaces with build up. So, so you know. Dan James as well, I think, it, off the bench in a game like, say, Blackburn, you know, if it becomes stretched, it's a great option to have. You know, that's something yeah. that's good there. You know, Bamford as well, you know, if if we're chasing a game or if we're trying to hold a game and we need someone to just sort of make the ball stick a bit, then, it, again, Bamford in the last couple of weeks hasn't really done that. But to be fair to him, before we get into this terrible spell, he was doing that. And I think the other thing I'd say with Joseph, why I'd be a fan of Joseph coming in in, in the nine spot is that, to be fair to him, Although he's been great off the bench, he's also shown he can start games. Chelsea, he played the full 90 there and he obviously gets himself two goals. You know, it's not a case of, say, he can only come off the bench and things like that. He's proven that isn't the case, albeit one game. But again, you know, I think there's definitely a case now for Joseph to come in. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is one or two changes. I think just revitalizes the team, freshens things up, changes yeah. the perspective of certain players, you know, in terms of having to obviously have some time on the bench and make impacts off the bench. You know, Nanto's form, let's not forget, came off the back of losing his place to Dan James. Yeah. You know, for me, I'm not saying he suddenly became more motivated or anything like that. It just kind of was almost like a realisation for Nanto that, hang on a minute, you know, I've got a challenge on my hands here. Because let's be honest, Dan James' end products has been much better this season. You know, he has delivered the goals and assists at key moments. But Nanto is definitely the better footballer. And it feels like sometimes that little bit of man management, which I think Farker has done well so far this season, Maybe not so much the last two or three games. We can't run away from that. I think for me, the team against Blackburn, an hour before the game, will tell you a lot about the direction we're going in. For me personally, uh, you know, that might not end up being the case. We might go with the same team and win the next four. But I do think it needs no freshening chance. Up. I do no think it needs freshening up. I'm not going to lie to you. How can you say no chance, Connor? There's no well. Well, there's a chance. There's a chance in everything. If we're talking, if we're talking directly, obviously there's a chance. Um, so yeah. The, okay, there's, there's always a chance, a chance because there's always a chance but, but yeah you clean sheets against all four teams and you're yeah, if, we, if, 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 we, if we're talking yeah if we're talking really then, but then yeah no no this team doesn't win all four it doesn't 
it doesn't I win just, all four I, without Somerville absolute hero balling without changes. Correct. And that yeah, could yeah, well yeah. happen. Yeah, well, let's, not, let's be honest, that could well happen. But I, th- yeah. I want more certainty than that. I want, in a promotion battle, you want your certainties. You want your guaranteed eight out of tens, nine out of tens, and just certainty in the team. It, yeah. it, it's not what I'm saying is that it's not unfathomable for a team to rattle off four straight wins. It would be unfathomable for the team to, uh, to, you know, if we needed to win the last eight or last nine, like I would say that that's the fact that we won, won so many matches in a row was pretty, pretty remarkable in and of itself. And what I'm saying is we've seen very recently uh, this team put together a string of results that none of us predicted. So I just think I just think it's a little bit brinksmanshipy. I'm not saying that it's there's no cause for concern or that we shouldn't make changes. I believe that the, all the, the changes we we all seem to agree on them. I just think that it, we're getting into this space of almost a dramatic either or. Either we make these changes or there's no way we're going up. And I just I don't know if. Well, that's exactly what it. I, I that's think that's exactly, a bit brinksmanship. But, but it's it's not brinksmanship because if it was brinksmanship, it'd be after one game, and I'd completely understand that. But now this has been a run of form where I think that there is certain personnel in that side who are a hiding, b there's a, a lack of confidence in a what lot do you think of these hiding players. specifically. I think because oh, I think we'll probably all, agree on this, but I want, what I, I want to hear. I, I, th- I think you've got a lot of the midfield hiding at this moment in time. And I really, think a lot. Of, I think there's a lot of pressure forced on. Joe rode on at this moment in time to bring the ball out from the back and create something. And I was looking at that midfield the other day and I've seen that midfield before want the ball. And I thought that they didn't, they didn't want that. Look, this is just, this is a fan's perspective. Listen, yeah. the data might not back it up. People might tell me I'm talking rubbish, which is fine. I'm looking at Graven Kamara specifically in that game. And Kev, Kev was in the, in, in the ground with me and I turned around to him and said, they're not wanting the ball. They don't fancy it, and there's a complete reliance on the centre backs to move into the midfield and try find the forwards. And I don't really know what the role of a midfielder is. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna switch the ball, if you're not gonna do mid to long range passing, if you're not going to, um, you know, man mark a player out of the game, whatever. If you're not going to go and get the ball off the centre backs and try and force an attacking movement, I don't really know what you're doing. And to be honest, I don't really know what that midfield is doing at this moment in time. And I think that's. Another big problem, another big problem. And I would say in the past three to four games, there is an argument that we've lost the midfield battle in all four games. So, so you so, think it's a matter of person, of personnel hiding versus them doing what they're being asked to do by the manager? I Yeah, I, th- I think, I think, I think, yeah. And that maybe comes down to confidence at this moment mm-hmm. in time. Maybe that comes down to, you know, the instruction not being completely understood or maybe them losing confidence in the instruction because it's not working. And there's a blueprint, evidently, to play against Leeds at this moment in time with the personnel that we've got in. And I think if we get players in who have... There's, there's, there's advantages, in my opinion, to every single player that's that could could come in. Could come in. Like, if I yeah. look at someone like Connor Roberts, I think this is a guy who... I know it sounds ridiculous, but fired Burnley to promotion last season with that goal against Middlesbrough. Excellent. He's got experience in these situations. What's the point in bringing him in in January if we don't utilise him in these occasions when Archie looks knackered? He does. Right? He does. So, so, so then, yeah. then, I would look, then I would look further forward and I would think, okay, like Oscar's quite rightly said, and as you've quite rightly said as well, Gabe, tight spaces, when we're trying to break down a, a mid to low block, why on earth would you not get a player on the right-hand side who's more technically able than another player who is evidently out of form? And then yeah. I would look further forward and think to myself, well, in my opinion, and listen, we had big debates on here. I don't think Matteo Joseph should have been taken out after that Chelsea game. He was, that's fine. Okay, understood. He was taken out. And f- for me, from that point onwards, Pat- Patrick Bamford's form has been very intermittent. And post the international break, it's fallen off a cliff. So I would think that if you're if you're to put Gabe, you flash the stats up of how many you know goals to minutes he's uh, the minute ratio he's got, which is fantastic. I'd be the best in the league. I think you said he's best sharp. The team, not in the league. He's sharp. The he's, team. he's hungry. It's best of the team. Sorry, he's sharp. He's hungry. He's done it for club and country. Why are we not utilizing these players right now who give us that edge? That's all I'm saying. I see this. This is what I'm saying. Maybe, Gabe, this is probably a better way of articulating it to you. I, I, I don't see a downside with any of these players coming in. I don't see a risk. We totally all. agree on that. I, I, I 100% agree with you, especially because if you start Willie Nanto and it doesn't work, right? Yeah. You have something completely different coming off the bench. Dan James's speed in the latter half of a match 
Again, we've talked about this with Mateo Joseph as well. That was my yeah. original hesitancy about bringing him into the starting lineup. However, with Bamford playing this poorly, and some of it isn't just, you know, it's not just the kind of critiques of Bamford that we kind of get boilerplate. He has always, even when he scored goals, he has always been a, a low chance to conversion ratio guy. He needs a lot of hacks on goal to put one in the back of the net. Yeah. Joseph, the data is limited. I'm not going to go out there and say that he's guaranteed money, but give him a half of football. If it doesn't work, you can go with a more, more steady hand, but he gives you things to start that Patrick Bamford doesn't give you. And in, in my opinion, and I think it's played out over the, albeit limited, limited, but the data that we have, he has been really impactful when he's been on the pitch. And I, I, I totally agree, um, agree with you on that. I think where I'm most concerned um, is primarily that I, I think we know that Fark is not going to make big changes. So we know that he has at various points in the season shown earlier substitutions and better player management. However, it does seem like he's reverting back to some of the stuff he was doing earlier in the year where the changes were coming too late. I mean, yeah. you're right. The fact that we were reliant upon, and again, granted, we've not played Coventry or Sunderland well this season. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you should you still should be able to grind out. You shouldn't be relying upon officiating blunders and stoppage time to grind out result at home against Sunderland. And and Gabe and Gabe as well as well. What he's what he's doing for the first time is we're seeing some things come out post match. You know, he, he's mentioning set pieces, and then he's mentioning the three minutes added on. Why is there only three minutes? Well, you put your substitutes on earlier. We win the game potentially. And we're not even talking about three minutes. We're actually loving the fact that there's three also, minutes. So what's he talking about but, set pieces for? But, we're but third this, bottom in set pieces. But, and this is what I mean when I'm talking about fine margins when it comes to substitute timings, when it comes to set pieces. If we've not scored, if the last time we've scored from a corner is 162 set pieces ago, what are we doing? And this yeah. is, I just feel right now that we can talk about personnel. We can talk about individuals hiding. We can talk about players off form, off colour, whatever. But the book stops at the at the manager. It does. It, it has. He, he, we can come on here and say X about Bamford, X about James, X about yeah. Melee if you want to. But the book stops at the manager, and and this yeah. is what I'm. This is what I, th I think it needs to be directed at, at the minute. It's a huge period of time, not only for Leeds United but Daniel Farker to get this right. I think uh, Oscar, I'll kick it over to you in a sec because you've been very patient and waiting. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I think, sorry, Oscar, sorry, mate. What I want to say though is that. I am not at the point where I am feeling alarmist yet. After if Black if he fields the same lineup against Blackburn and we don't see a dramatically different performances from the same guys he rolls out there, then I'm going to be really concerned because I'm going to I may panic because then he's probably just going to roll out the same group struggling group against Middlesbrough who will absolutely punish us in ways that um, the, the games and the, and, the, and the game and, and the games are running out, Gabe. The games are. are running out. Oscar, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean. Listen, boys, I think the thing we've got to say is we don't know what the team is going to be against Blackburn yet. For yeah, all we know, yeah. the changes might be coming. You know, I've said before, you know, Farker has suddenly made changes. You know, Birmingham at home on New Year's Day, suddenly yeah. Bamford comes into the team. Yeah. Bamford hadn't started the game all season, and then all of a sudden he hasn't been at the team since. And Perot hasn't started the game since, I don't think. You know, Farker has got it in him to make these dramatic changes. You know, we, we can't forget. Listen, I don't want to keep referring to it about his previous promotions, but he has managed this run in before. Yeah. You know, he has been there and done it before. And that Ipswich result yesterday, it feels to me like it has swung momentum back towards us. I'm not saying it's fully back in our hands again. It isn't. But it feels like momentum has shifted yeah. quite a lot. The fact that Ipswich haven't scored for, for, for two games. But mm -hmm. we've now got to capitalise on that. It is absolute must win against Blackburn. I can't have it any other way. I don't care what happens to Ipswich at the weekend. Agreed. It is absolute must win against Blackburn because psychologically, we've got to capitalise now. We can't let it go three times, three chances to capitalise and waste all three. We, we can't let that happen. You know, Psychologically, you, 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 it is very difficult to come back from that. And I do think we will beat Blackburn. Um, what I'll say is about the changes and why I think the key is that over a season, the more you play the same team over and over again, analysis these days, you know, how much data, ability to watch footage from all sorts of different yeah. angles, you know, all sorts of different teams are going to get wise to you if you keep playing the same team over and over again. And this is no criticism of Farker, it's just reality. You see it with the best teams in the world. Manchester City, 
fluctuate from a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-3 some games to a 3-2-4-1. And they are the best team in the world. And they have to fluctuate the system from time to time. Yep. Yes, they've got to rotate because they've got more games and things like that. It's just the reality. It's not a criticism of the manager so much. It's just when you've got so much analysis and the ability to see what works against teams and what doesn't work against teams, eventually when you keep playing the same team, the same system, the same personnel, the same spaces, teams are going to work out ways to stop it. And I think probably the start of that was maybe Leicester at home, um, You know, in terms of where Leicester, yes, they've got real high quality. They did show to a certain areas that you could exploit with this Leeds team. When before that, I was thinking... I don't know how teams can get at us, but Leicester showed it can be done. Yeah. So that is something to definitely bear in mind. And that is why I think the changes will come. Um, I think Farker has been reluctant to do it for whatever reason. Probably a bit like you said, Gabe, to play players into form. That hasn't worked, if we're being honest. For certain players, that hasn't worked so far. They've not become bad players overnight. They're just out of form. Right. Over a season, 46-game season, players can have two or three spells of being out of form. Not every player is Joe Roden and Ethan Ampadu, who just basically are eight or nine out of ten every single week, or Pascal Strauch, who's eight or nine out of ten most games. It's just not the reality. Um, so I think the changes will come. Um, I'm hoping it's for this game. And that's why I'm still hopeful. I mean, I'm still hopeful. But I can't lie to you, lads. I'm, I'm worried. I've definitely, the confidence in us getting the job done has gone diminished. I'm worried. I'm week, really worried. Since the international break. I still think we'll do it, to be honest. I, I do still think we'll do it, but we've got to really put Ipswich under now because they're, they're not playing for ages now. Uh, I'm by sorry, the way, I'm not to... trying to gaslight you guys into thinking you shouldn't be worried. I think that... No, no, it's, it's... not at all. No, we don't, no, one, but, feels, Gabe, 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 no one feels like that, mate. No but, but, I, but I think, but what I would say is I do think some of the, some of the concerns, I think are le they're legit concerns, but I think we're almost at a fever pitch before, honestly, I don't think it's the time to panic yet. If we, again, if Farkas shows that stubbornness that we suspect him of doing, and I, I like we're getting in the chat, and I love to see it because this is part of the fun of doing this, right? Is to see kind of theories and stuff. But some of it is like, oh, you know, he's heard it in the media, so now he's going to try to prove. We don't, guys, we have no way of knowing what goes on in that man's head. Uh, what I would say is, you know, the last five matches or so haven't been great. Um, It's kind of a predictable time to drop off. But we have leaders in the team right now who are some of the best players in the team uh, that I trust to give us a little bit of a boost. Um, but what I uh, to Oscar, to your point a second ago, in terms of how to get at leads, if I were Blackburn, you know what I would do? I would just instruct my defenders, don't get cute with it in the back. Play it, even if you have to play it out for a corner. They can't score on set pieces. They're not going to score on set pieces. And just kick them. Just slow down their momentum and let's try to catch them on a counter. That's what I would do the entire match. And to be honest, if we keep going with this plotting pedantic stuff, that may be, <laughs> that may be uh, what makes it really difficult for us. What I would like to see is because I think it's unrealistic for Farker to make three changes. I just, I don't know if he's done it at all. I haven't, I didn't prepare. I didn't go back and look, but I don't know if he's made three changes uh, uh, when he hasn't had to add a necessity for injury. But what I would like to see is at the very least, Willie, Willie Nanto coming into the starting lineup. I would like to see Connor Roberts come in as the as the second. I hate to prioritize Mateo Joseph as third priority, but like I still think we could probably be successful if those two changes are made first. But I would also, I mean, I think Mateo Joseph at the start gives us something that Bamford hasn't. Yeah, there's definitely a case for it. I think in terms of um, obviously we haven't seen a lot of Joseph, have we? But I think we can all tell. Yeah, you know, what we've seen real, has been good. Yeah. We're working with a real top talent here. You know, Spain haven't called him up. You know, in terms of the under twenty ones for no reason. They haven't been desperate to get his signature. Uh, in terms of as a Spanish international for no reason. So yeah, you know, when he's barely with, played, when he's barely played any minutes. Exactly, we're working with a high quality player here. You know, someone that we had to fight off a lot of com competition to actually get to the club as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, we know we're working with a lot of quality here. But I totally agree with Gabe. You know, I think it is a case if we change that right hand side, I think all of a sudden, you know, the tactics look great again because you've got a left hand side that can, can, can combine and you've got a the, so you look at teams now at this moment in time, okay? Sunderland, Pembele, Trey Hume. They play two right backs essentially against us to cope with Presencio Somerville. Yep. That works a lot less effectively if you've got offensive threat down the right hand side. I'm not saying mm -hmm. Dan James isn't an offensive threat. But he's not as big an offensive threat when he's isolated against a fullback. For right. Me, On the ball threat. You're 100% right, uh, Oscar. It's different is, than playing the ball into space. It's yeah. a guy with the ball at his feet. Yeah. 
That's 100%. it. You need Nonto to open up the game from that side. And then James can come on against tired legs. We saw it against against Millwall to great effect. You know, Nonto was man of the match for me. James came on for Nonto and we've and we've seen the game out 2-0. For me, you get that offensive threat down the right hand side. You know, Connor Roberts, we know, gets goals and assists at this level. We've seen it already in a lead shirt. You know, that crucial goal, goal against Leicester, the crucial assist against Huddersfield. We know we can do it. We know he's got experience as well, which is another big boost. If we revitalise that right-hand side in terms of getting more offensive threat, more yeah, more productivity down that right-hand side, teams can't just focus on Somerville anymore. All of a sudden, Somerville's got more space to play into. Rutter's got more space to play into. Nonto's got more space to play into. And it opens up the game from that sense. And yeah. for me, that's the priority. Of course, you want to get more efficiency in front of goal if we can. But I think the priority has got to just be getting the performances right, you know, these next four games. I swear to God, if he makes those changes and I have to endure 90 minutes of of those front players holding the ball at their feet and waiting for the defense to collapse upon them, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go nuts. I'm gonna be the one. Are you say are, are you saying are you saying Gabe? Sorry, did you say if, if he doesn't make those changes? No, if he fails, does, so. if he does, if he does make the defense and it's, it balances out how you have to play us and our attacking uh, players decide to do young player stuff and hold the ball and lose the ball when the space is actually there this time because it's not been it's not been a binary where it's every time Nanto's played and Somerville's had more room to operate he's been unplayable and Ruder's been unplayable that's most of the times that that has happened they have there is a correlation between that balance and that space of being op- opened up but because and this is my my kind of curmudgeonly thing about playing young players is they're inconsistent both mentally and physically and they do stuff that gets on my nerves and I'm all I'm saying is that if Farka actually does manage to actually play uh make the changes we want him to make it I swear to god if we have one of those games where they get these guys just decide to make shocking decisions I'm gonna lose it I'll just say one other thing in, in defense of Farka we need to remember as well Nonto and Roberts are coming off the back of injuries we don't know how bad them injuries yeah were. that's true I true. mean I was very surprised. I was very surprised to see Nonto and Roberts on the bench against Coventry. You know, I, was, I was very surprised at that. And it, it does feel to me like that needs to be taken into consideration, as frustrating as it, as it is. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah, uh, you're right. we're a week down the line, hopefully, you know, Nonto's more ready. And that might it might just be a simple case of that because before Nonto got injured, Nonto was ahead of James. You know, in that spell before this international break, Nonto was firmly ahead of James in the starting eleven. Roberts had only just come in. Um you know, and, and Gray, Gray being in fantastic form before then. So who knows where Farker's head was at in terms of, for me. By the Gray, way, did you see Connor's happy face just then when he got oh, his yeah. was, <laughs> was like a I, kid I, I, just I, reaching out like. <laughs> but I mean, Connor's face when he seals Nonto in the team sheet on the against that. And that, by the way, you really know what's going to happen if we don't. That Our WhatsApp group is going to be blowing up oh, with well, incandescent rage no before. By for 11.31, a minute after the team <laughs> 50 notifications, Connor's head. I've been, you know, Oscar's, Oscar's been in groups with me before this game where I have been, I have, I have kind of like lost it with leads like oh. a hell of a lot. Actually, in our WhatsApp group, I think Oscar will attest this. I've been very, very tepid when it's come to this, this season. This time you have, really. last season you weren't, I remember last season you no, were season completely off the boil. Yeah, last, like, last reasonably the, so. The but I've been of the season, the amount of times oh. you and Raymond would argue I think at one point you called Wayman Peter Pan because he because <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't grow up or something. Is that what it was? It was oh my god! Mag- it's some of that magic or something. You, you got I think he's like living living in, live, living in fantasy land, wasn't it? That called him Peter Pan. Oh my god! <laughs> and I thought his that lad's head is gone. Is what I was thinking at that point. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been it's been it's been decent this year. But yeah, I, I, I want to bring I, Connor out here to LA just to watch him do, him do LA traffic and just make him drive the rental car during rush hour. And just see what happens to his mental health. There's honestly there's honestly only one thing that drives me absolutely mental. Well, my my girlfriend will start laughing at this, but it is it is it is Leeds United and Daniel Farke is driving me up the bend at the minute. I mean, I think you've you've probably seen a a, a change in my demeanor, but it was almost you don't com- say, <laughs> but but it was compiled by like I genuinely got on a, the, that podcast with my dad earlier, and I thought he's going to bring me back down to earth again, and he was just absolutely no, raging. So, so, yeah, so but it, inter- interestingly, a bit of a discussion point as well. It, it wasn't just, um, you know. I know, I know. We're having a laugh at, at, at me and, and, and my, my old man there and stuff and, and and that sort of stuff. But but Oscar, you, I was watching your your all these TV video raging at the ground, like the the, the sort of anger towards Daniel Farker for bringing those substitutes on 
when he brought them on um, for just the lack of changes, the lack of... And I think ultimately you're watching it and do you know what, lads? I'm bored. I'm watching them and I'm bored. And I'm not I'm not here to be entertained, but I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, suddenly we just so we, we just look so predictable. And when we have one shot on target throughout the whole game against the Sunderland side with nothing to play for, and they have three shots on goal, one of which Jack Clark definitely should have scored. You're looking at it and thinking, okay, this is definitely symptomatic of Daniel Farker needing a change. And I, I don't know what you think at the minute, but I just think. So, I mean, someone's put it in the comment section below, and I completely agree. We just look slow. Slow. We do Everything look slow. Everything is slow. There's no dynamism. To, slow. We don't just need to beat Blackburn on Saturday. We need a comprehensive win, to be yeah, honest. I, to, yeah, a nice, easy 2-0 or you know more yeah. kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'll take a win, any kind of win, but something just to settle the nerves down going into that Middlesbrough game on, on Monday yeah. night and nine, nine days later. Something like the Millwall game. I think that's the last game where I think we were in control from minute one to 90. Ironically, last game Milford Nonto started. You know, the other thing with Nonto, I, I promise that this is the last time I'll mention Nonto. No, it won't be. More, Stop it. Don't make promises you can't keep. It gives you more control because how good he is with the ball at his feet. He very rarely loses the ball. You know, yep. he does very, very... He has got a fantastic football in IQ. Um, he has. He has. It, he has. You know, that is something that massively goes under the radar. With Although he is easy to wind up, and that's the one thing I don't like yeah, about him. He, he gets is. wound up, but, and he, he time wastes uh, um, holding the ball when we need to get a goal in the last do you know what, though? Do you know, game. Do you, know, do you know what, though, Gabe, with the amount of time um, Nonto and, and Somerville and Rutter get kicked? No, you're it, right. It you're really right. doesn't yeah, surprise yeah. me, to be honest. You're right. Oh, it's crazy. It is crazy. I mean... It's the, probably one of the worst things about this level is you know seeing some of this when you've got the better players, seeing some of the decisions you get against you at this level. It's just the reality of what it is. But it, it's a hard one, isn't it? Obviously, my frustration on Tuesday was not just in terms of we made the changes late, as I think I said on the all these TV video. It was we didn't have a Strachan or a Pablo on the pitch. You know, someone. I'm not saying quality wise. That's not what I'm yeah, saying. I know they what you mean. Leadership higher up the pitch. You know, obviously, yeah. Rhodes on the Ampadu, we know are leaders, but we didn't have that player who calmed it down in the final third or sped it up yeah. in the final third in that kind of sense. And I'm not saying we needed someone like a Pablo to smash one in for 30 yards, just someone to just calm it down a, a little bit, bit of just, IQ in there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show a little, a little bit, bit of leadership. Of because, and that's maybe where I was a little bit disappointed with maybe some of the older players. You know, they didn't show that responsibility almost. They that. haven't, and they haven't for for years. Uh, like, and that's the thing about about. I know we dig out Patrick Bamford, but he he just doesn't lead on the pitch, does he? He he, he doesn't. Well, I think, he, he, to be honest, with Bamford, I think before the international break, I could have absolutely no criticism of Bamford. No, he's he playing okay. Nine role yeah. exactly how we wanted him to do. His goal tally was one in two. He was leading from the front. It's just since that, and it. it it might be anything. He might be carrying a knock. He might might be out of confidence, out of form. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it's just Bamford or anything like that. Um, Oscar has always been streaky. He's always yeah, been he streaky. Yes, he has. He's a confidence always. player. Yeah, we have yeah. Fo some footballers are confidence players. I'd say Dan James is a confidence player. It doesn't mean they're a bad player, but you've got to be aware of the fact that when they're out of form, they are out of form, unfortunately. You know, they do have to either play themselves out of the form or go on the bench have a great impact on the game, and then the confidence is back kind of thing. It's just that, you know, Dan James has had drops off in form this season at times. You know, he's had a really good season for me, but he has had drops off in form this season, but Farker's managed it really well. But what I would say is, ease off Farker a little bit because Nonto and Roberts have been injured. Maybe it is part of the plan to get, you can't tell I, me. I agree. You, 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 you said it and I totally field. agree. It's a matter of injury. Yeah. Farker is changing that midfield a lot kind of the last couple of games in terms of not so much starting the games, but in the middle of games. He's making changes all the time to it. You know, against Watford, Gray went in there for times. Kamara was obviously in there at the start. Someone else, I can't think, Ampadu started the game in midfield. Hull, we changed it up again. At, at one idea. point against Hull, Archie Gray was playing six. He was on deepest midfielder, yeah. which totally didn't, didn't suit Archie's game. We're changing things up, but we're not making the right changes kind of thing. So, I don't think Farker is happy with the midfield. And I think that is the... It's one thing to talk about Nonto and Roberts, but I think the biggest thing with that is getting Archie Gray into midfield and that ball progression through the middle. Mm. Because we know one thing Archie Gray does. Last time Archie Gray played in midfield from the start of the game was Chelsea. He was the best player on the pitch that night. We know he can play that role. We know he's a midfielder. I think alongside Kamara and, and Gruev, all of a sudden they look far better players because they've got someone who plays their strengths a little bit as well. You know, they can receive the ball deep. 
Archie will push on. He'll connect things with Rutter. Rutter will connect things with Nonto. And it's all the, it sounds basic, but it is the basics. You know, Fabian Delft quotes here. Sometimes it is the basics of football. It really is. Fabian Delf quote. A legendary. Connor, take us out on that it's note. A yeah, quote, yeah. That. No, that's right. a legendary quote on right. YouTube. But Oscar, it is very true. O- Oscar, Oscar, that is the perfect way to go out, mate. A Fabian Delf quote. The ba- I have to do his, his hands actions. Oh, it. It's the basics of football, <laughs> lads. It's the basics oh of football kind of thing. Yeah, I was going to say you need that. You need that sort of like Brad. When he accent. shouted at Kevin De Bruyne how to play football, that was honestly as much as I love Fab Delph. That was that was fucking, that was brilliant. Honestly, that um, was so, so Sh- good. Shanna says none to some of the rutter appear to be complaining more uh, more than most in the division, but that's because defenders are doubt to smash them because they were class above. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, right. Let's let's sign off everybody. Um, right. Okay. Uh, quick score predictions for uh, for the for the game. Then Gabe will go with you first, mate. Yes, Ryan, I know who Delph is. Um, let me see. Uh, three nil to uh, to Leeds over Blackburn. Three nil. Oh, yeah. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. And just because we're talking about title, um, title competitors, Gabe, uh, Plymouth Leicester. What are you going with there? <laughs> Plymouth. Okay. Wait, is it Leicester away to Plymouth? Stop, stop thinking about the town and tell me what the Plymouth versus Leicester score is going to be. Uh Two nil Leicester probably. Okay, then then we've got Ipswich. Uh, Ip, Ipswich at home to Borough, Middlesbrough. Oh, uh, two two draw. Ooh, okay then. So advantage Leeds United. Oscar, same question to you before we go. Uh, Leeds two Blackburn nil, and I think he will make the changes. I think I am right. I do I genuinely think I'm right that Robertson and Nanto will come in. I honestly do believe it. Um, Plymouth Leicester. 1-0 Leicester. Be an awful game, that one. one. <laughs> Ipswich, Middlesbrough. I'm going to agree, agree with Gabe. I think Middlesbrough have got something. They've still got a little bit of hope this season. They've one, got one. Summit. There's something in that Middlesbrough team, honestly. I'm worried when we play them, but 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm worried when we play them as well, but yeah. Okay, I'll go with a Leeds 2-1 win. Oh, uh, apparently, apparently, we don't have a defence anymore. Um and I'm going to go with an Ipswich 2-1 win, Leicester 1-1 draw. There we Can go. I just say one thing, though? After the 2-1 win, you'll either, we'll either win it in the last minute, you'll be on absolute cloud nine, calling out Kieran McKenna and Merezka as frauds, or we'll go 2-0 <laughs> up and hold on for a 2-1, and you'll go, oh, we're un- not going up. Unconvincing leads yeah. uh, today kind of thing. It'll be one That's of them it. two. I'm feeling it. 100%. Yeah, maybe. Um, guys, uh, you can become a YouTube member. Do so. Uh, jo- press the join uh, button. Link in the description below for Patreon as well. Check out the merch. Make sure you do so. We're getting some sent out to these two as well. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll see you in a bit. Cheers. In a bit.